Hello, darlings. Our road trip through Canada continues. For the first time ever, we visit Chilliwack and the Harrison River Valley. Ah, the scenery! Thanks to the Fraser Valley Group for sponsoring this video. It is Sunday morning and we just checked out of the Airbnb. And today we're gonna head to Chilliwack. It looks like it's written as Chilliwack, but I confirm it's Chilliwack. Before anything else, we gotta fuel up. Now Blacksmith Bakery has four locations. We're checking out the one at Latimer Village. Mamio got the avocado egg toast topped with sunflower seed crumble. Concentric circles of tomato and roasted garlic vinaigrette surround the toast. Meet the Blacksmith Benedict with prosciutto, asparagus, and truffle oil with your choice of side salad or crispy smashed potatoes. Definitely feeling the truffle, but it's very subtle. There's a little sourness that makes it more enjoyable. I think it's coming from the hollandaise sauce. These croissant pinwheels have mesmerizing shiny layers of crispiness, while the raspberries and pistachio cuddle with the cream. The pastry base itself, it tastes like vanilla. It's sticky on the outside. Mamio has a unique way of eating this. It's the peel method. This Danish pastry has a mushroom filling, as prosciutto partially covers it, acting as a blanket. You have to take like five bites before you get to the center. So the prosciutto here, you gotta treat it like a umeboshi, take a little bite and then have uh, the base pastry so it evens out the saltiness. About 40 minutes east brings us to Greendale Acres, a family farm in Chilliwack. They're famous for their corn maze, which has sweeping views of nearby mountains. Turns out they made the first corn maze in Canada back in 1999 and every year they change their design. Hello. Oh, you're a cuddler, aren't you? Oh. <laughs> Time to sink our teeth into roasted corn. There are two kinds, buttered corn and the other has Parmesan ranch sour cream and mayo. Ooh, very sweet buttery corn. Mm. It was very easy to eat all of this. Mm-hmm. We meet up with Vanessa, who gives us a tour of the farm. Hi, my name is Vanessa Audi, and this is our family farm, Greendale Acres. It started 25 years ago. Our goal is to make it so that everybody feels like friends and family that arrives on our property. So this year we grew thousands and thousands of zinnias, and we started a You Pick Flower experience, and so anybody can come and pick flowers on the farm, and we make them super cheap. They're like $5 for 10 stems. We just want people to take the beauty of the farm home with them and to be in the flowers because it's such a beautiful experience. We have different colors and varieties of zinnias on the farm. When you pick them, it's interesting because you have to make sure, see this one, not ready to cut, but this one is ready to cut. So if you cut them too early, they won't last, but if you cut them right at the right time, they take like, probably a week and a half that are still beautiful in your house. So we grow all our pumpkins on site here and we have another property off site that we grow a few more on. And we have lots of different varieties, heirloom pumpkins, some huge carving pumpkins, and then we have our giant Atlantic pumpkins as well. So we have lots of different animals on the farm. Um, my favorite friend is Patches, he's a llama, and he is so wise, he carries so much kindness and we just love the presence he has here. We always teach about how he treats everyone with kindness, no matter if they look different than him or big or small, he breaks up fights from the chickens. And he's, <laughs> <laughs> we teach about him with school groups. So he's just lying down over here. We also have baby alpacas this year, the three little pigs, lots of different goats and chickens and different animals, rabbits. <laughs> the goats are standing in their food. <laughs> So we make our own popcorn, we make our own cotton candy, and then these lovely donuts here. We have apple cider donuts, as well as um, we're gonna be doing a pumpkin spice one, which is gonna be delicious. And they're made fresh here on site. We opened our bubble hut two years ago, and it is the one attraction that actually attracts more adults than children sometimes. <laughs> oh, that was pretty oh. good. Inside the barn, there's more fun and games. If it's a rainy day, people can come in here and there's still lots to do. So we have like a Hoosier pumpkin where you can play with a partner. <laughs> the moment I saw that hay bale maze, my inner child was like, hey! You can walk through the labyrinth-like paths or hop around on the top. <laughs> Instead of 
sand. This is the corn box. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that feels nice for sure. It's really nice. It's eh? cooling too. Yeah. yeah. Things that kids can do gets them off their phones, gets them off anything to do with screens, and it's like very sensory oriented. The corn sandbox, the hay bale maze, coloring gets their mind into play and really wholesome play. So this area is an area where we have all of our fire pits, and in the fall you can rent fire pits and you can come with your family and do like a family barbecue. You can roast hot dogs and s'mores over a fire. So we do live music events under here in the fall and we have done some flower side concerts and every summer we kick off our season with a big open air country concert which is super fun. So we start our season in August, early August. We really specialize on doing a lot of educational field trips for kids. We see thousands of kids a year and we teach them about where their food comes from, the life cycle of a plant and a pumpkin. It's not quite set up yet because it's not quite pumpkin carving season yet. This whole area will be just full of pumpkins and for people to take pictures in and we have our pumpkin house as well. Next up, we head to District 1881 in downtown Chilliwack. A few steps into a pedestrian alley is Fortitude Wine Bar. Their food menu is made to pair with their BC wine and international wine, all carefully selected by their sommelier. We dine with Carly and our conversation spans a range of topics. Alrighty, my name is Carly Burkish and I am the Destination Marketing Manager here at Tourism Chilliwack. And we're having lunch right now at Fortitude Wine Bar in District 1881. And District 1881 is our newest downtown core here in Chilliwack. It is home to many breweries, many restaurants, and a lot of local shops. Many people call it the downtown Disney of BC. It is an ode to a European village. We got some capers on there, and oh, green onion as well. Something very different. Usually, bruschetta, it doesn't have caper, does it? So putting that caper is a really unique spin. So this beautiful dish, ooh, I gotta learn how to make it at home. Served with fried flatbread. Some parts is very crispy and a little bit more firm, and other parts is very flexible. So let's dip it into that feta. It's so good. You can order just this. You know, it kind of tastes like a fried donut, but less sweet and savory. But wait, there's more. Upstairs, there's a special event going on. Uh, my name is Ashley. I'm the wine director here at Fortitude Wine Bar in Chilliwack. Today we are getting set up for Sunday School. So once a month we host a wine class. It's an irreverent deep dive into wine, kind of a nod to growing up as a pastor's kid and always going to Sunday School at church. Uh, so I thought why not kind of make church here and so super fun. Today our uh, subject is obscure and indigenous varietals around the world. So we're tasting Malvasia, Zweigelt, Tanat, Obade, Merwa, things that you you may have never heard of, but yeah, super fun. We had a wonderful lunch with Carly and just talked about not just the area, but also about life and such. Now we're gonna drive to the Harrison River Valley. Surrounded by coastal mountains, Sandpiper Resort is home to Rowena's Inn on the River. We are staying in the Osprey cabin and it has two rooms. Oh, the bathroom has a very tall ceiling. Oh, this must be like 20 feet. Let's check out the other bedroom. On each side of the bed, there is a charging station. So you might be wondering, where is the closet? Well, we have the hooks. There's a luggage rack. And if you go into the living room, there is a armoire. And when you open it, we have a place where you can hook some clothes. In here, extra pillow, another pillow, iron, and the board. We have a kitchen with an island that functions as a dining table. All right, so we got some wine, water, and Pellegrino. So we are right here, the Osprey, and nearby, the red line, that is a trail. Within walking distance is their on-site restaurant, River's Edge Clubhouse. There's a glass room patio with a waterfront view of the river. 
we gravitate towards a cozy nook by the stone fireplace. Above hangs a tapestry depicting flowers and birds. Mommy O got the burrata salad, and the second I saw the words Argentinian choripan, I knew I had to try it. It had chorizo, smoked red pepper aioli, and chimichurri. And the magic is in the sauce and the sausage. It's our final night in the Fraser Valley, and I don't want to leave this valley. We still have tomorrow morning. We're gonna head east for breakfast, and then head back home. It is raining and there is all oh, that clouds in the mountains, so beautiful. We're gonna go on a morning stroll before we check out. Here's a trail map. And they talk a bit about the animals here and the salmon life cycle. The world's largest winter bald eagle gathering is here. We are right here right now. And then we're gonna pass through the 14th golf course right here and then go back into the trees and it deviates but I think we're just gonna stick to the middle trail and then F. What is F? F is the eagle viewing gazebo and so there are the eagle signs here which means it's the eagle congregation location and the salmon signs are here that is the salmon run viewing location after looking at the map, I'm guessing this will be about a 10 minute walk, one way. Oh, look at that tree, so curvy. Wow. This trail passes through the golf course. Oh, look at that. Oh, I think we're gonna get closer and closer to that view. I'm excited for that. Oh, I think it's this way. It's very easy to navigate, they have signs. It rained a lot two days ago, and it's raining a, quite a bit today, so I'm thinking some mushrooms gonna pop out here in a couple days. Chalice Flats Bald Eagle and Salmon Preserve. I'll keep off the flats, respect wildlife, October through February. That walk didn't even feel like 10 minutes. Let's take a look at this beautiful view. It's a good place to just sit and relax. You can even bring a book and just like chill here while you listen to the water. There's a lucky penny on the bench, sitting at the edge. The clouds are moving so fast through the mountain. We did see some birds passing through further away. Not sure if it was an eagle, but I do believe we're a little early for the eagles. Check it out. Look at that little dot. Some mushroom, fungi. More mushroom, fungi. Polypores. And right here by the trail, here's some more. And key ones. <gasps> Wait, that's witch's butter. Whoa. So it's gonna absorb water and it's gonna get bigger. I'm so excited to see that. <gasps> see, under here and more witch's butter. Oh, I'm so excited. There are blackberry bushes, but it's past the season, so they're all shriveled up. Um, I do see a couple red ones, but those are not ripe. After the refreshing rainy stroll, we head to Harrison Hot Springs, a village south of Harrison Lake. It's Monday morning at Muddy Waters Cafe. Open since 1993, this family-run business also has an espresso bar and ice cream shop. They sell home-baked goods as well. I found my favorite coffee here, and other coffees are a little over roasting, most of them, but it is perfectly roasted. Mommy will love the coffee so much, I got her two bags. This one's the pumpkin spice dark chocolate mocha with almond milk. You also have the choice of getting whipped cream. Mmm, gotta love autumn when they bring those seasonal drinks in. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Now the breakfast wrap, it might look simple on the outside, but boy is there a lot of character inside. It's got that gentle savoriness. It's very moist. All oh, these vibrant colors are waking me up. Or is it the caffeine kicking in? Whatever it is, it's working. <laughs> it's so tall. I don't eat this. 
The eggs here are so moist for both dishes. The food here, it tastes like really good homemade food. Just very wholesome. Check out the view behind me. The cloud is so big, it's bigger than the mountain. So many of their baked goods looked good. Since it's autumn, of course, we gotta get the pumpkin scone. It's not over this, it's just light. Another seasonal treat. Mmm, so good. This trip is making me really feel autumn. I love it. It's, a, it's my favorite season. I'm a cookie. <laughs> Does your mother say don't play with your food? My mother plays with her food. Oh, that must be um, chocolate in the middle. Speaking of chocolate, there's plenty of it next door at Rocky Mountain Chocolate. Later, I learned that Rocky Mountain Chocolate was founded in Whistler, BC in 1988 by a husband and wife. Since then, they've grown to 45 locations throughout Canada. They work in small batches and entirely by hand. We happen to walk in on them while they are making almond ridges. Hi, my name is Mark. We are here at Rocky Mountain Chocolate Factory in Harrison Hot Springs. And boy, do we have some delicious treats for you. They sell a wide assortment of ridges and they use local ingredients as much as possible. So these are sponge toffees. Very interesting. And then these are the sponge toffees dipped in chocolate. It's a very interesting texture. It kind of reminds me of like astronaut food. The texture. Chocolate jack-o'-lanterns with candy corn inside. I like how these are like the stamped, the wax seal stamps. So I totally thought we'd just pop in and out, but we ended up spending like 20 minutes in the shop. Check it out. All that and a bag of chips. This is milk chocolate on sea salt potato chips. Three nuts walk into a bar. <laughs> Oh, Canada, milk chocolate with maple cashews, PB&J, milk chocolate, peanut butter and strawberries. Wow, there's so many fun ones. These can make really good gifts. The perfect pair, dark chocolate, strawberries, and champagne flavor. There's so many interesting and tasty things to look at. We got Sasquatch feet chocolate and also bought some gifts. Before heading back home to Greater Seattle, let's take some big deep breaths of fresh mountain air and wander around the beach and lagoon. Oh, and don't forget to say hi to Sasquatch, aka Bigfoot. What a lovely area this is. Oh, such big mountains. Because we're close to the mountains, it looks very big. So it really feels like the mountains are hugging you. And the mountains are being hugged by all these clouds. Everyone's just getting hugged. Because the clouds keep rolling through the mountains, every time you look, every few minutes, it looks different. And when you get a huge cloud covering a mountain, it looks like the mountain's not there. So it's like the landscape is always changing. And now we're gonna head home. And that concludes the Fraser Valley series. Hope you enjoyed watching all three videos and you got some good ideas on what to do in Canada. If you didn't watch parts one and two, I put those video links in the description box. There's so much more to see and do, way more than we can possibly fit in a video. While filming these videos, I kept bookmarking places to check out in a future trip. Thank you to everyone for making this trip possible. To each and every person spending time with us, whether it was giving tours, joining up for meals and conversations, I appreciate everyone for their amazing energy and bright smiles. Fraser Valley, we'll be back. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Toodles, my noodles. So all of these windows up here, that's gonna be the small hotel called Hotel Morado. 
Uh, it's about 12 rooms, it's a boutique hotel. And then these buildings here, they're gonna be live and work businesses. So you have the townhouse up top and then your shop down below. They're gonna get a 40 foot tall Christmas tree so that it'll go about 15 feet above the roof. Up here is the grand hall, so that's that ballroom. Romeo's gonna eat Bigfoot. <laughs> oh. You hit the toenail. You're giving manicure. <laughs> yeah, torturing them is not easy. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little pedicure as well. <laughs> For more outtakes and bonus footage, I posted the exclusive vlog on Patreon. That exclusive vlog is how many minutes long? Over 13 minutes. Once again, I hope you enjoyed this video. And the next video might be about mushrooms. You all know by now, in my pockets of free time, I love to do arts and crafts. This week, as most weeks, was pretty busy, but I did make progress on my repurposed shelf. Furniture makeovers can be a lot of fun, just reimagining the potential of old stuff, you know? For more creative updates, check out my Arts and Crafts Instagram, at Creative Chillout. For food, travel, and life, that's on my main Instagram, at Miss Mina O.